Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the F1 podcast that has absolutely no time for inappropriateness. Inappropriate... Inappropriacity? What? Bad, badness. Naughty badness. Are you listening? Hi, my name's Ford and I want to know what's going on. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the Michael Andretti of F1 podcasts. They are not letting us in. Well, they did let us in in the 90s that we were very bad. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably why they won't let us in now. (laughs) Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. Is it too early to talk about Hamilton and you're currently signed in? (laughs) (laughs) What has happened here? What the fuck just (laughs) happened? I don't know. I was trying to drag the screen. (laughs) Welcome to Formula One's Sake. You're currently signed in as Terry Saunders. (laughs) <laughs> I'm pleased we did two intros before something went catastrophically wrong. I think that's a season record for us. Welcome to For One's Sake. We're all in our 40s, except Ronnie, and we don't know how technology works. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. Is it too early to talk about Hamilton and Ferrari? It's yes. all I care about. No, all I we'll care about. No, I want to talk about Hamilton going to Ferrari no, because no, no, I no, no, love no. it. We've got a whole segment on it. We'll, be, we'll, we'll talk about it then. Hamilton's going Welcome to, to the- Ferrari. <laughs> Spoilers. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, full of bounce and bonhomie as we embark on this 738 race season. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Although there it's, are some sprints. It's not even a marathon, it's one of those fucking ultra marathons that Eddie Izzard does. It's the Marathon <laughs> des Sables. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, welcoming new listeners for a new season. Here's a quick recap. <sighs> I mean, Terry's got a diary, we swear a lot, there's drinking, we don't know much about F1. Enjoy! And Ayrton Senna died. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Too soon. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peer, and after our enforced winter shutdown, we're going to scrub the tyres, grease the wires, and get aerodynamically slippery with excitement about the 2024 Formula One season. In a radical change to our established routine, and like Roman Grosjean's car at the Bahrain Grand Prix, we're splitting the pod in two. In this episode, we'll pick over the bones of the winter news and talk shit about it, while in the next episode, we'll preview the Bahrain Grand Prix and talk shit about it. It's new, it's fresh, it's the same old bollocks. It's FF1S, and that's all to come. I don't like change. <laughs> Joining me is a man who is an insurance expert now. It's Phil Tromans. Hello, happy new year. It's the end of February. Um, long-term listeners may remember that last year, a lady crashed through my garden fence in her car. <clears throat> and uh, last week, we finally got the insurance got married. for that, oh. so that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's lovely. What a, what a beauty. Um <laughs> Yeah, it took four and a half months to get the check through, so that's good. And I thought, great, no more insurance. And then uh, YouTube watchers will see the uh, the bookcase behind me, mm. which is not in its normal position because we had to move it. And the reason we had to move it is that uh, my wife noticed that the bottom of it had gone black. And for audio it's listeners, not it's not a black bookcase. And we're like, what's going on there? And I, checked, I looked underneath it, and the carpet was all wet. Uh-oh. Long story short, was it the cat? Oh, no. It was. It was Terry's cat. <laughs> <laughs> We've been posted over. No. Um, uh, the bathroom next door, mm. in the next door room, not next door, not the neighbours, um, the shower was leaking and it leaked under the wall and into the carpet. So the carpet's gone rotten. We broke one of the tiles in the bathroom to see what it looked like underneath. And it turns out the wall's gone rotten. And you've point, broken a tile. <laughs> and I've broken a tile. But that's the least of worries because the remaining tiles appear to be holding the wall up. And I need a whole new wall. The wall behind me. Is is coming down at some point. A whole, a whole new, new wall. wall because a the whole plaster... new wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in fairness, when it's not there, it will be a new fantastic point of view. So uh, I'm quite looking. Yeah. Don't you dare close your eyes. I'm being held up by tiles. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. yeah, um, I'm having to go through insurance again. I've had more to do with insurance like in the last three months than I have, I think, ever. Yeah. So, so you know, I'll get a if new you're wall an expert, out of it, so that's then. nice. Are we? Can you give any kind of insurance advice? Yeah, don't legally. Don't, just don't. Don't insure. Excellent. Don't, yeah, don't get insured. <laughs> it's not worth it. No, it absolutely is worth it. I'd be in all sorts of trouble if suddenly I had to had to redo carpets and walls and bathrooms and without house insurance. Because uh, yeah, oh. fun and games. Anyway, happy new year. <laughs> happy be- new year. Happy new year. And beside him is a man who has just bleached his hair. It's Jacques Villeneuve. I mean, <laughs> I mean Terry Saunders. <laughs> oh, I mean, he did start singing. 
Well, look, I bleach my hair. Look, I was going to get my hair bleached today anyway for the podcast because I love you guys. Oh, yeah, but nice. the woman who bleaches my hair mm. cancelled for the second time in a row. And <laughs> this last time it was because of childcare, this time because of back surgery. I mean, where do I get these people? And so I decided to bleach my hair myself, which is a terrifying experience because, yeah. because it could go very ginger. And I think I've just got away with it. But I do remember once bleaching my hair. And it did go ginger, and it, some of it fell out when I was about 15. Ooh. But since the last podcast, I've turned a new age. I am now the same age as Lewis Hamilton's number. I thought you were saying Lewis Hamilton's car. <laughs> I was like, a month? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm 44 now, like Lewis Hamilton. And I'm wow. Gonna, I'm going to go to Ferrari too. <laughs> we're not talking about have you. Very Just, exciting. Just like lick, <laughs> looking at the window, <laughs> it looks very good. It is. It is. Um, it's quite like Lewis Hamilton did a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, he did do that, didn't he? Uh, it does look quite um, very yellow. I'm gonna yeah. say. It is very yellow. A yeah. this new camera I'm using for the podcast has got the saturation bumped up, so it's not quite that yellow. Right. But I will probably put some grey toner on it tomorrow to make it look more sure. Sheet, sort of level it out. You're putting grey on to cover up the grey. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so it's all grey apart from a few black hairs. Yeah. Are you doing matching uh, beard and eyebrows? Matching collar and cuffs, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must but say, beard and eyebrows have... gonna keep the same. Drapes match the curtains. <laughs> for for forty four, you have a you have a good full lush set of hair. I mean, it does look. I do. I do have. Good, I can't help good. myself. Do you know what? Yeah. I can't help that whenever I see someone who has less hair than me, I feel mm. incredibly superior. Yeah. <laughs> Rightly so. Same I think with short should. people. That's why you and Anthony um, Hamilton don't get on, isn't it? I don't like the short people thing. I'm only five foot. I'm going to say six, but it's oh. probably nearer five. I know. I know. Oh. I can sense it. <laughs> <laughs> All the way down there. <laughs> Ollie, you don't appear to have bleached your hair. What, what have you been up to? No, I haven't bleached my hair. I haven't bleached my hair, but I have had rotting floors as well, Phil. Oh my oh, goodness! Oh, what a good weird club! Oh, something about floor rot, mate. White men of our age that just oh, have to deal with floor it's rot. The, it's the my floors thing. are fine. You, yeah, but your hair's fucked. I, <laughs> the uh, yeah, I, I spent I spent most of last week under the stairs fixing it. Basically, my stairs partially collapsed, and then I had to uh, had to fix it and rip out all the rot. So I've I've got to do the insurance thing. So I'm going to speak to you and say, hey, what what do I need to do? And you'll just tell me to go. Away. And and they say that as you get older, you get less cool. Yeah, I know. I know. When Sorry, I am I am I in your spit off consumer guide podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, be I mean, way more interesting than this shit. Called You're in Berlin. Rot. You're too cool. I just, I live in suburbia in an old 1930s house with the mm. floor caves in. Well, there aren't, not, cool. there aren't any there aren't any 1930s houses here. We all know why. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. <laughs> Let's start by going through the news that's happened over the winter break. If anything, there was more going on in F1 when the racing wasn't happening than there was during last season. Lewis Hamilton, Mercedes's golden boy, is going to Ferrari. Not a rumour. Actual fact. From next year, Hamilton will be in red alongside Charles Leclerc, which means Carlos Sainz is out on his ear and Mercedes is looking for someone new. So let's get into this. Biggest surprise in F1 history? Ooh. I think Senna dying just tops it. <laughs> yeah, that was a surprise. Yeah. Um... It's up there, I'd say, in terms of like sport-shattering news that we weren't expecting. It's Possib the biggest. I say it's the biggest surprise since he left McLaren or Rosberg. Uh, well, Rosberg. I Queen. was going to say Rosberg. I think that might be ever so slightly more surprising because he didn't just switch teams. He like is like I'm retired. I'm done. Bye. Yeah, that was quite surprising. But I, I mean, the, the weird thing is, this is like the boy who cried Ferrari, isn't it? Because he's. I mean, in fairness, he hasn't been saying it, but the rumours about him going to Ferrari have been going around for so long that I'd kind of just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not the moral of the story, Phil. The boy who cried wolf is about a boy who cries wolf. Yeah. And then when, when he actually wolf, went to Ferrari, nobody believed him. <laughs> yeah, but we believe he's going to Ferrari. So <laughs> well, we do now, but I didn't. The morning the news came out, I was like, yeah, whatever. And then as the day went on, it became, it was like, these, these rumours are not shutting up today. Mm. It's not just a few fringe... Oh, there know, are some wolves. Tweet. Yeah. Oh, but not Toto Wolf. Oh, oh we, it's all coming together. <laughs> we, the boy uh, who cried Wolf. <laughs> we can obviously only speculate. But why why do you why do you think he's going? What, what, what just fancies it? Fancies a bit of a change? I mean he's knocking on a bit. He is. 
And I don't really think there's any downside to this move. <laughs> the only downside is if next year the Mercedes is absolutely unstoppable. Um, uh, yeah, I don't feel like that's going to happen. I, feel I don't. Like... I'm, I'm kind of. I've lost. I've lost faith in them a little bit. Yeah, I feel like the rot is set in a little bit. There'll be yeah, people it's like leaving. My carpet. Yeah, there. And I don't know. I feel like I. I think I agree. I think he's gonna. Yeah, at best he's gonna win a championship with Ferrari and be one of the very, very few drivers who have won championships with three teams. And he'll I have think, the most championships of anyone. And have the most championships of anyone. Um, at worst, he'll you know be a Ferrari ambassador for the rest yeah, of his life. He'll have, not, he'll have not pass, a terrible job. Passport to anything in Italy, basically. Yeah. And and he could probably let's be honest, he's done so well with Mercedes, he's probably still got a key to the city there, hasn't he? Because look, look, this is the same in reverse as Schumacher. Remember? No, I'm not. You know, I'm not going to talk about Schumacher now. But Schumacher pissed over his Ferrari legacy to go no. and join Mercedes. No, I don't think so. I've I've been to Marinello since Schumacher retired, and he's still everywhere. I think he'll always be a Ferrari legend. Um, and I think that Hamilton will always be. You know, a, a Mercedes legend, which admittedly is not quite the same thing. I don't think the Tifosi in uh, in in Germany is quite the same. But um, oh no, Hans is very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome, Lewis. Um, but I think this will, you know, Ferrari drivers. If you're a Ferrari driver in Italy, yeah, you've you've you never have to buy a drink again. So, and and he's he has said over many years that he would at some point like to drive for Ferrari. Although he's also said, I don't think it's going to happen. So. But Something also... must have happened, which brings possibly us to the next level of speculation. Go on. Which is that he <laughs> did not like the way that the Mercedes was going. Oh, uh, well, um, no, just getting In slower. terms of, like, he he <laughs> might have seen the writing on the wall and was like, I don't think this car's going to get any better. Mm. I'm fucking out of here. Well, I, I do it... like the idea, though, that he is just doing it so he doesn't have to pay for a drink in Italy ever again. <laughs> I mean, it might be. <laughs> and he said, I already, because drinks are really cheap in Italy, and he's got a lot of money. <laughs> he is, probably even a, more now. A mad I, reason. Yeah. I don't think they've announced how much Ferrari are paying him, but I can't imagine it's not very much. Or maybe he just likes red. Of course, all of this means that the driver market for 2025 is going to be loopy. Silly season has already started before a wheel has turned in anger. While this year we've had no driver movements at all, Hamilton's move next year is sure to herald all sorts of manoeuvring as drivers try and swipe his seat at Mercedes. Could this get very, very messy? Yes. 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 I'm quite looking forward to it. I think it's going to be full of all the drivers <laughs> on the grid and probably a lot of drivers who aren't on the grid. Basically just going, sir, sir, me, sir, Toto, Toto, over here, Toto, look what I can do, look what I can do, look, I can stand on one leg. Can I give one of my first predictions for the year? <laughs> yes, yes, please. I think, well, well, A, George Russell is still going to be my most hated driver, as it says. <laughs> and that, I answers, think, that answers literally half of the questions in the q I forgot he existed <laughs> for a minute. Episode. But I think what's going to happen is he's going to try and assert himself this year, and it's, he's going to fail miserably to the point that it will affect his standings <laughs> next year and they'll get a number one driver and he'll be number two like they'll get Alonso in and he'll just be a little Lance Stroll Alonso will do his patronizing oh George you're really good future world champion yeah you say think you you're just hoping that that happens that's what I you mean, want to see okay let's talk about the city season already if Fernando Alonso takes Lewis Hamilton's seat in Mercedes which is genuinely being talked about yep yeah, and then, so, Alonso is in Hamilton's old team. Hamilton is in Alonso's old team. And there is beef between them. And if there's anything like a competitive... Like, that would be the story of a lot. It's a, like from, from, Alon from Alonso's joke years in McLaren and being at the bottom of the grid, for him to end up in a Mercedes in a few years' time would, would have been unthinkable. Like, like at, that, at the back of the grid. <laughs> if, if Hamilton... If Hamilton's motivations are to be believed that we've just speculated upon. That would go in Alonso's kind of history, wouldn't it? That he yeah, would yeah. join Mercedes. He goes to really as... great teams after they've been great. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. Talking of what he's like, RV Co what's RV Coates? He was good at this point. I'm pointing to my hat because I'm wearing a vintage Renault hat this evening. What was Harvey Keitel's name in Pulp Fiction? He was the Mr. Mr. Wolf, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, Mr. another Wolf. Wolf reference. I think that's, that's what Alonso is. He goes up and he cleans up after a team have done really well. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes in and he goes, oh, there's a mess in here. Did we have a party last night? Hey! Yeah. My name's Fernando Alonso. I solve problems. I create problems. I create problems. <laughs> you now have more problems than when I started. I quit. <laughs> yeah, and Winston Wolf drives a Honda as well. 
So oh. that doesn't quite work. Would that be a serious um, prediction, actually, with, uh, Alonso well, taking the Mercedes seat? He's one of a number of... I mean, let's be honest. Anybody who's any good is going to be linked to that seat because this isn't just, you know, a fucking reserve seat at Sauber. This is one of the... Even even with Mercedes' woes, this is a prime seat. So everybody bar probably Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc is going to want that seat. And Lewis Hamilton, clearly. So Alonso has been talked about. The smartish money. No, that's probably overstating it. There's talk of the the hot new kid that we've talked about previously, Andrea Kimi Antonelli, um, is going to get it. Um, He's got too many um, Formula One names. He has. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's like an amalgam of different. Maybe I mean, maybe he literally is just like a composite. Of Formula One drivers. I thought he's. I thought when I first saw his name, I thought it was, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Kimi Anton Gianni Morbidelli. That's right. <laughs> Andrea Moda, Kimi Raikkonen, Gianni Morbidelli. He is being talked about. Like, I mean, he's really being talked about. I know lo- lots <sighs> of kids coming up get talked about, but he seems to be, like, lots of people whose opinions I respect to seem to be saying he's the next Verstappen kind of thing. But he's yep. he's not <sighs> even done F. Three yet? F two? I can't remember. F2. He's he's, uh, he's got to do F two. Like if I think if he absolutely destroys everybody in F two, yes. which I had a quick look at his record the other day, and it appears that every series he's raced in so far, he has utterly destroyed everyone straight away. So if he does that in F two as well, then I think he'll be seriously in with the seat because then you've got a sort of legacy, haven't you? You've got you've got George Russell leading the team for a bit, and then when he turns out not to be as good as Hamilton, as let's be honest, I think we've think he's going to be they've got Antonelli in the wings learning oh the craft. my god no 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 so next year they put this um uh, Morbidelli I said, no, I'm not gonna remember really <laughs> I've, got, I've only got a finite number of Formula One surnames in my vocabulary so he'll go to uh kind of B team for a year I reckon like maybe they'll put him in Williams or something you might do year. actually yeah that's a good shout give Alonso the drive just to really just to really break George Russell like he's <laughs> one like, year contract for, a, for yeah. Alonso you got a one year contract if you win the championship that's great win some races that's great but we really just want to show George Russell that he's not as good as he thinks he is <laughs> and then we'll get the new kid in and you can be and you can be a Mercedes ambassador <laughs> That I mean, that doesn't seem like the weirdest suggestion in the world. The other one, obviously, is Carlos Sainz, who is looking for a seat and is uh, he's in a bit of a funny position now because he's he's a he's a fine driver. He's fine. He's a race winner. He's fine. But if if you were looking for like succession plans for your team and somebody said Carlos Sainz, would you go yeah, or would you go? I think eh. Carlos Sainz is as attractive to other teams as I was to women in the early 2000s. So very. No, just in a way that, you know, people would kind of, everyone would kind of hook up with each other. And then every now and again, someone would be like, oh, it's you, is it? <laughs> and you're left. <laughs> yeah. Because so, he driven? Cause he's driven for like nearly every team, though. He drove for Toro Rosso, Ferraro, Ferraro, Ferraro. Roche, <laughs> Roche. He was an ambassador for them, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Ferraro Roche ambassador. <laughs> that's the only post photo one job he's going to get. Um, no, but he drove for. Didn't check the spelling in the contract. <laughs> <laughs> he drove for. So McLaren, Ferrari, Toro Rosso, Renault. Mm. Yeah. That's half, That's nearly half. Minardi, the teams. Benetton, Tolman, March, <laughs> Leighton Hills, Van Wall, Cooper. But I reckon, yeah, he'll, he'll if he drives for a fifth team next year. That's 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 not good. And he always gets like a one year contract. There's always a news story at some point in the year where they go, he's really he's really after more than a one year contract this time. And then you just see this sad story go. Carlos Sainz has signed a one year contract. Was he at Minardi at one it. point? Or am I completely making that up? I don't think Minardi was around when he started he's not he, he was of... he was at Minardi no it, uh no but no he's definitely he was definitely he did something with me he was there as test and reserve driver and he was in oh, the okay. race team in 2001 boom so he, he has been driven go- for every single team no 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 he kind of been going for 23 years that's longer than that don't remember that epic battle between him and uh James Hunt in 1976 I got who are we talking about <laughs> <laughs> Who are we talking about? Fernando Alonso. 
Oh, right. I was talking about Carlos Sainz. Yeah, oh, okay. Terry was talking about Carlos Sainz. Oh, I thought you were talking... Uh, okay, sorry, I thought you were talking about Alonso. That's what I mean. I was like, Carlos oh. Sainz didn't drive for Minardi in 2001. We might have new listeners this week, Phil. They've just listened to you for five minutes saying Carlos Sainz drove for Minardi in 2001. I thought you were talking about Alonso. That's not any better. When did we switch over to Carlos Sainz? <laughs> We've never talked... We haven't talked about Carlos Sainz for about 20 minutes. Yeah, we, we were talking about, about it oh. for ages. <laughs> oh. They're both Spanish. Yeah, it's quite racist. Moving on. Are. <laughs> There's been a big update in the introduction of a new Andretti Cadillac team, and that update is that F1 has told useless son of the 1979 world champion and his posh luxury Yank Tank manufacturer friends to fuck right off. The reason? Lots of them. Most of which are largely bullshit, because it's all about money, right? Right. It's all about the money, money, money. money. Uh, the funny, funny, funny. Yeah, F1 has tried to big this up. And say, oh, there's some very legitimate reasons why why they can't come into the Formula One. They're American. Um, <laughs> They're from new money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically like saying we don't think they'd bring any value. It's like, have you seen the American team that's already in? What value are they bringing? None. It, I mean, the whole list. So, so as a as a explainer to anyone who's been living in the real world, so the FIA <laughs> said... We want a new team. And Formula One said, no, nah, I'm not sure. We mate. don't. <laughs> and the FIA said, well, we're the FIA and we get to say who races. And then Formula One said, yeah, but we're Formula One and we get to allow people onto the track or not. Yeah, <laughs> so We control the door. Yeah. So what are you going to do about it? So then FIA said to Andretti, all you got to do, just, just why don't you just find the world's biggest car manufacturer and use a racing heritage that goes back 60 years and your quid's in, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and Formula One went, uh, we've never heard of you, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Andretti jumped through all the hoops that everyone set. And then Formula One still said, actually, nah. Although I would like to bring... So this has been an irregular feature, but I think it should be a, a regular feature. I was throwing this on both of you. I do apologize. Okay, for But it. you know how I, I always have this thing about if I had a job at Formula One, mm-hmm. I'd be shit at it. So like, you know, if you really think, could you do a pit stop? It's terrifying, and I just be—I know I'd fuck it up or break something or like kill someone. And for the first time in my life, I found a job in Formula One that I would be perfect for, which is part of the uh, the reason they gave for not giving Andretti the, the anything was they said we sent you a meeting request and you didn't respond to it. <laughs> And then Andretti come back and went, oh, it went to our spam folder. And this really happened. This is really what they said. This this is mad. (laughs) And I'm just there thinking that is the job that I'd be perfect at is going... Checking the spam folder. No, no, just just be there going like, because I'd have seen the invite come in like three months ago and went, I should probably tell someone about that. And then it's all over the news and they're like, well, have you said it? And then I'd move it to the spam field and go, oh, I just found it in the spam folder. Oh, my God. (laughs) And I've realised I'd be perfect for it. So, Andretti, your Formula 1 or any Formula 1 team, if you want to blame everything chief, on an admin error, officer, I'm your guy. Developing a constantly developing stream of excuses. <laughs> Never resting on your laurels. Yeah, maybe we'll see him in a few years. Like Andretti, you're going to have any laurel with Formula 1. <laughs> We'll get into the testing shortly, but while it looks like Red Bull has made another smasher, their stranglehold on F1 might be rattled by a power battle at the top of the team and allegations of impropriety against team principal Christian Horner. Sod's law says something will have been decided by the time you hear this. But as of recording, it's all a bit up in the air. Uh, What could all this mean for Red Bull this season? I think Sod's law is named after Christian Horner. Um, Yeah. Well, it's it's a weird one because as as we record this on Tuesday before the Bahrain Grand Prix, we're hearing that something's going to be announced on Wednesday because, of mm. course, it will. So either he's been let off and everything's fine or he's out of there or he's now running Toro Rosso. Mm. Uh, we don't really know. Just to recap on this. I was going to say, what's he been accused of? So, well, it is apparently an open secret in the F1 community, but I'm not close enough to the F1 community to have heard it. And apparently right. they're not allowed to repeat it. So Sounds he's done bad. something that's naughty. It might be to do with professionalism. It might be to do with being a dirty old man. We're not sure. I'm sure it will come out at some point, allegedly. Um, but either he's 
uh, there's an investigation going on, uh, an independent investigation by Red Bull Racing's parent company, which is Red Bull GmbH, I think. And it's being done sort of by independent barristers or something. So it's a proper hardcore legal kind of process. And there's a lot of weirdness about it because it, a, a cynic would say there's more to it than just that. It might well be that he's been a naughty boy in whatever fashion and that he's going to have to take his medicine if he's actually guilty. But there's also the suggestion that in the wake of the death of Dietrich Mateschitz, the former head of Red Bull, who was very much invested in the racing team and very much behind Christian Horner, who is, I think, the longest-running team principal in F1. He's been there since the start of Red Bull, so it's got to be pushing 20 years now. Um, that in the wake of the death of the Red Bull, Red Bull boss, there is a power battle going on at the top of Red Bull. Not just the team, but the the, the organisation, what does the drinks. And that the racing team is a sort of part of this, and there's all sorts of manoeuvring, and there are people that want to get him out, and there's a suggestion that Horner and Helmut Marco, who's the spad <laughs> at, uh, at Red Bull, uh, are no longer friends... And then into this mix, you have Adrian Newey, who is maybe the greatest car designer ever, ever to who have lived, who is good mates with Horner. And if Horner goes, does Newey go? And then what happens? Newey goes to Ferrari. Well, does he? I mean, if I were Newey, I'd be like, oh, I've never done stuff for Ferrari. That'd be quite fun. Working with Lewis yeah. Hamilton. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a giggle. Um, It'd be a good sign off to a very good career, wouldn't it? It would. So on the face of it, it's just somebody's done something a bit naughty at work. But I think there might be more to it than that. Well, it's going on and on and on, isn't it? So It is. I mean, yeah. it, it, as I say, by the time this comes out, it, something may well have happened. But right now, it hasn't. I feel but, sorry for Jerry. But I also, think. well, yes, we, do, we all do. But in terms of what it means for the team, it does look, and again, spoilers for the testing bit that we're going to talk about in a minute, it does look like they've designed another really, really good car. But they don't have nearly as much aero testing and whatnot and all that as everybody else because they're the current winners under the new rules. If they've got mad fighting going on in senior management, that's surely got to distract from ongoing operations through the season. Mm. And, and if, I was going to say, if there's one thing we know about Christian Horner is mad fighting. Because I'm, I'm just thinking, do you know in the 2020-whatever, the, 20, 20, the, the Abu Dhabi season, you know, the Hamilton Verstappen one, he was always on the front foot when it came to Verstappen and Hamilton and blaming Mercedes. Oh, he's blaming he's quite snipey, isn't he? Yeah. Very snipey. So if you imagine what he must be like, you know, and I'm taking a guess here, but if you extrapolate that to what he must be like, you know, in the back rooms of Red Bull, and if he's trying to get pushed out for whatever reasons they are, which we don't know, then I wouldn't imagine he wouldn't go with that fight, which is, I think, what's been happening this week. Just mm. from, you know, it's criminology. We're, we're totally guessing. But in most circumstances, if the CEO of a company was under such a dramatic uh, allegation they wouldn't turn up for the car launch and he was there and it yeah, just feels that like was he, I, very yeah. odd i thought and yet he's and was it he's not doing the press conference after the well, yeah he's apparently so not do, he's not doing the the, the pre-race press conference this weekend um which is un which doesn't necessarily mean anything but it's unusual for the team principal of the reigning champion not to do the press conference at the first <laughs> yeah. race of the season it is weird isn't it i think if you go back quite a long time i can't think of a time where that's not happened he he yes. also loves the limelight you know exactly. like he's he that guy isn't he so for him to not be yeah he is he weird. is the face of red bull racing i guess mm. pretty much mm. Isn't he? You know, the, the drivers come well, and go for all the stars that, that Vettel and Verstappen have been. Horner's the one that's always been there. I mean, this must have affected things to a certain level. Even even he's admitted in the interviews he did um, that it's been a distraction. If he goes, I think to a certain extent, all bets are off. A fast car and a good driver will only get you so far in F1. You know, fine for the start of the season, but later on in the season, when there's all sorts of new structures and new things and management changes and everybody's politically fighting for a power oh, yeah. seat, it's all going to go mad. And if there's a power struggle and then Verstappen, and if Perez beats Verstappen and Verstappen crashes into him because, you, know, you, know, you know, all those things could I mean, happen even, and you even need just someone. From, even just, I mean, I don't actually know where... What's the relationship like between Jos Verstappen and Christian Horner? I don't know. Not good, I think. Is it? Okay, so that's interesting. And then you can guarantee that, you know, Sergio Perez, for all his failings, let's be honest, in the last year in the car, is a shrewd operator. In, you know, yep. you don't get to the top level of F1 for a long time without being able to negotiate your way around things. And he's got some very powerful mates, including, I think, Carlos Slim, who's like one of the richest men in the world. 
he is going to be seeing opportunities to further himself there and maybe not get booted out, I'm sure. And also, if Verstappen and Jos Verstappen are like trying to install all their people at the top, you know, maybe that's not going to be good for Verstappen. Maybe he needs a bit of pushback. You know, we don't know. And again, ruin everything. if we've been talking about the, the the sort of the vacuum left by Hamilton moving, if if the top team principle of the top team goes, you can bet your bottom dollar everyone with pretensions of any kind of power in F one is going to be looking there. If not at his seat directly, then seats that will be left by other people going or other people moving up yeah. you know, there's going to be so many people going i could get the move of my career here or people could be wanting to leave red bull like a sinking ship and go to ferrari <clears throat> yeah. with lewis hamilton yeah i mean gunter steiner that would be a story wouldn't it gunter steiner takes red over bull. from horner that'd be amazing wow. <clears throat> yeah and he's only allowed to drink red bull and then <laughs> just see what happens yeah i mean it, it, it's it has the, it's really annoying that we're recording on a Tuesday and not on the Wednesday where we might know what has happened but it's got loads of potential which uh, might not be realised, we'll see This is all very exciting, well tell us how wrong we are uh, you can do so via a myriad of social medias, we're at for f one sake on Twitter slash X or whatever it's called now Instagram and on Facebook and we're on TikTok too because we're all young and, we, well I am anyway have done anything on TikTok yet? I think I put, I posted a still image on TikTok. <laughs> put an animated gif of a dancing baby up. Perfect. Or, alternatively, you can email us. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> uh, wrong at ff1s.com. Alternatively, if you think we're right, then why not buy us a beer? Uh, actually, stop right there, because we have news. We're opening... Are you ready? I'm ready. A pub. What? Sort of. Uh, Basically, after years of coasting, it's time for this podcast to rebuild. Some stirring music, please, if you will. That's perfect. We've spent years being Williams, resting on old laurels and generally being sexist. A couple of flashes in an otherwise downwards trajectory. So instead, for 2024, we have decided to be Williams. Doing slightly better than we were, but also, you know, not world champions. That's a noble goal, just to be slightly better. (laughs) We may not record in a pub anymore, but by golly, we're not going to let that stop us drinking booze. And so we're opening a pub. You're all invited to join us there. It's called The Whinging Moustache. Terry, why is it called that? Well, all the best people have moustaches. Yep. Phil, Ollie. Yeah, I've got one. But, but, but with a beard, does it count as a moustache if it doesn't? Yeah. If it's, yeah. I think it's, uh, well, according to Adobe AI, it does, because it would not draw a moustache. <laughs> anyway, that's another thing. It's a very frustrating day. Um, so, look, obviously, the number one person that you think of when you think of moustaches is a person very close to my heart. Hitler. <laughs> Nigel Mansell. Oh my God. Sorry. Sorry. It's just Berlin moustaches. I just, yeah, yeah. yeah, I went there. I've gone very blonde. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah, loved yeah. me. He it's loved like, me. Yeah. He yeah. means your insistence yeah. on calling your flat your Reich. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not Hitler. Mansell. Right. Mansell. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll, well, the whinging moustache does kind of sum up the 30s, mm. if you think about it. Mm. 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 And we're going back into those times. Mm. No, so we're, we're, so it's a, so if we thought if there was a, look, we used to record in a pub. We we now don't record in pubs because none of us live in London. So let's yeah, bring the we, pub. We there are pubs point, outside London. We should point out, <laughs> I think, quickly, because we've been going on this for several minutes now. It's not a real pub. No. What? And within this pub, you'll find other like-minded, disenfranchised F1 fans, as well as bonus interviews and episodes over the season. All this, plus ad-free listening, mm. all for the price of a beer a month. You just sign up through Apple Podcasts, head to our page, and you'll see the link to join. So, first things first, ad-free listening. You might think, you know, there's not much, there's not that many adverts on your podcast. Why would I want to take the adverts away? And they're quite funny. Well, from now on, I'm going to be making up adverts all the way through every episode. In fact, this segment is sponsored by Aerial Liquid. And when it's I say not. aerial liquid, I don't mean dishwasher liquid. I mean someone's a thrown some up fairy. Someone's thrown some liquid at you. Who knows what it is? <laughs> it is Berlin, after all. <laughs> yeah. So there's going to be that. You won't Phil have to listen to the ads by anymore. DHL. <laughs> well, not all the ads are really funny. You know, some of the ones that we did were brilliant, and people would probably pay extra just to listen to those. But I think some of the other ones 
I just plumbed in. Do you so, need some insurance for your you're, if you're in the pub? Floor. No adverts in the pub. Mm, it's a free yeah. house. And I've got to say, it's Absolutely. really hard to make a humanitarian aid advert funny, but we do try. Yeah, <laughs> and we fail. Um, as on top of that, interviews. I, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of the people listening to this think, "What would this be like if these idiots talk to people who actually know about F1?" Well, you'll find out. We're going to do some interviews with people who actually know about F1. We've if got you, one lined up. If you subscribe, haven't we? you'll find out. You have to. We've pay got to one find lined it. up, and we'll try and get some more. <laughs> <laughs> there will there will be more. So you can sign up through Apple Podcasts or head to our page where you'll see a link to join uh, or you can donate a, a one-off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. Cheers! It's time for the teams. The pre-season test took place in Bahrain last week. The only pre-season test because teams aren't allowed to spend money these days. Let's quickly run through the teams in order of how good we think they probably are. Red Bull. Rather than sitting on their laurels and tweaking their already brilliant car, Red Bull designer Adrian Newey apparently looked at the daring but shit Mercedes from last year and decided to fix it. So while all the other cars look like clones of the 2023 Red Bull, the 2024 Red Bull is radically different. This seems like a massive risk, but on the other hand, it also looks like a really fast car. And the team did loads of miles without any problems. So yeah. I, I'll be honest, didn't see this coming ballsy move to have the fastest car um, and then for the car that you've spent, let's be honest, most of last year designing because the car was already so good you didn't need to carry on developing it uh, to to come up with a new car that's completely different is an absolute baller move and Mm. based on testing it looks like it worked and you've taken the shit design of another team that spent two years trying to get it to work and couldn't and then made it work straight away it's just taking the piss, isn't it? Power it's almost play. like you can tell that Newey went up to uh, Mercedes one day and went, oh, yeah, I can see what you're trying to do. <laughs> I can see what you're trying to do, yeah. yeah. Smug. <laughs> I mean, I really hope they've, they've ballsed it up, but it doesn't I, look like it. I kind of do as well, but on the other hand, it would be really funny if they've just taken, what, the whole of Mercedes and their 1,500 people spent years trying to fix... And Adrian and Newey just Newey... went, oh, I see what you think. you just need to do that. No, probably what happened is Newey wrote it on the back of an envelope in a pub and then faxed it to the <laughs> design department and they just drew it from that. Went, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's six seconds quicker. They just whittled it from wood with some chisels, <laughs> stuck it in the wind tunnel, <laughs> found a second. Brilliant. Gave it to yep. Max Verstappen, added another second. Gave it to Sergio Perez, who was... Oh, Took a couple of seconds that. away. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, with the fairly big proviso of what we talked about before that other factors could completely balls up Red Bull this year and for the sake of competition not because I hate Red Bull because but for the sake of competition and a close season I sort of hope happens um if that doesn't happen I think they're going to walk it I, no sorry I think Verstappen's going to walk it again yeah difficult to get away from that really isn't it and the inlets are so skinny they're like envelopes they are and they've got Who'd the weird thought? sort of Trunky, trunky side pod th- th- side things. I don't even know what anything's called. We're gonna have to learn what they're they all called. They look like the uh, the kind of foam things you put in the side of a bowling alley to when kids play. They do. That's what's down the side of the car. What are those called? Barriers? Bolsters? Gutters? No, no. The no. gutters are the things they. The cover gutters up. what they go in. The barriers. barriers? Yeah, I don't know. Be bowling barriers. That. Bumpers. Bowling ball barriers. Bumpers. Bowling, po- bowling bumper. Bumpy, bumpy, bally bumps. Ball. Yeah. Gutter. So they've got those in. Yeah. It, I mean, it looks good. Delivery's boring, but we always knew it would be. Mm. It looks really fast. It looks really reliable because they did loads of laps in testing. They just kept going and going and going and going. And that certainly for the first few races, I'm thinking we're seeing Red Bull certainly ones, maybe one twos. But then when all the shit starts hitting the fan and, and, and the management are punching each other at the race, then maybe, then maybe everyone else will catch up. Ferrari! Based on the analysis of people much cleverer than us, this year's... I don't care! It's not Lewis Hamilton! <laughs> this year's... Sorry, carry on. <laughs> this year's Ferrari looks a tad slower on a single lap, but faster over a race difference, which seems like a sensible compromise. While both Sainz and Leclerc were fast in testing, the smart money says they're not as quick as the Red Bull, but perhaps the best of the rest. The drivers seem happy at least. Could this be an actual good year for Ferrari? <sighs> I... I mean, at the moment... The evidence says, yes, they're doing well, but it's Ferrari. 
I don't know that. See, I think Freddie Vas- uh, Freddie Vaseline has um, taken. He's taken a bit of the, the Ross Braun era of Ferrari. Like he's he's, re- he's ironing out some of the fuck ups. And let's be honest, he's making a glide path for a certain Wonder Boy who's coming yes, next but year. There's 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 a lot of wrinkles to iron. There is a lot of wrinkles to iron out. It's a wrinkly is, old shirt as Ferrari. Look, all I know is that when. Hamilton said he was leaving McLaren to go to Mercedes. Everyone went, Mercedes is shit. What do you fucking know? And then he's announced he's going to Ferrari. The, this year's Mercedes looks a little bit shitter, and the Ferrari mm. looks a little bit better, and I've just got my money on Hamilton yeah, knowing something. But can, he, can lightning strike twice? Yes. And lightning striking at a super efficient you know, German team with a history of doing well in motorsport is one thing. Lightning striking twice at a not very efficient Italian team with... A, frankly, an ill-deserved reputation for racing excellence <laughs> when you actually look back at their results. But who's more likely to get lightning twice? Is it the German over-engineers who are just doing everything to put a metal aerial on the top of a building to say, lightning, hit me, hit me? Or is it Ferrari? You get drunk on wine and go out in the rainstorm with a metal coat hanger. Going, hey! <laughs> and once every 30-odd years, someone doing that will get hit by lightning. <laughs> yeah, I suppose Hamilton does have form. I just, I, in a weird way, I'd like to see it, just because it will shake things up. But I can't shake this fairly nagging doubt in my back that something will go wrong. I think that this year's Ferrari team, or who should be renamed the Lewis Hamilton Test Team, <laughs> are going to do all right <laughs> for Golden Boy to come along yeah. and smash it. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting with with Carlos this year because no matter how I mean he's he's in he's fully mired in the silly season isn't it because as we mentioned like he is he doesn't have a seat for next year at the moment mm-hmm. and he's going to want one I assume and he's in this weird position where now he's I mean officially he's not Ferrari's number two but let's be honest he is because a look looks better than him and B look looks got a contract for next year and science doesn't. Well he's already Ferrari number three driver, isn't he? <laughs> Essentially, no yeah. yeah. Already. <laughs> so is he gonna just be the good boy and see out his time and do everything he's told, or is he gonna be like, No, I'm gonna show how brilliant I am? And he's, he's The know. set the latter. I think actually a bit like I was saying about George Russell, I think Leclerc's gonna lose it a bit, knowing that Hamilton's coming to sit next to him. Yeah, and that'll he's be gonna try and dynamic. be all dominant all year. So maybe maybe actually Leclerc and Sainz will just crash into each other a lot because Leclerc will be trying to be like I could beat Hamilton I can beat a great driver in a team and Sainz is going to be elbows out going I don't give a shit anymore yeah I mean Sainz 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 is not going to follow any team orders or anything he is just going to go out and be like nah it's going to be a fine balance isn't it because on the one hand yeah he's got you know it's like nothing I do can impress you enough for you to keep me so what's the point but on the other hand he does really want to impress every other team yeah, but yes. that'll be through his driving. Like, it's not going to be through. Yeah, but, but it's very disciplined because he does crashes listen. into his teammate. Yeah, well, he does at the but moment. But if he wins five <laughs> races. Yeah, but if he wins five races through being. through disobeying every order. Well, then the there's other a thing certain is, level of maverick you want to be and mm-hmm. beyond. That. Oh, I get it but, it. but think of it this way. So let's say next year he doesn't get a great drive off or, you know, he gets like Audi or something that's going to be a long project he might not win. This year could like legitimately be the last year he has a chance of winning any Formula One races yep. if the Ferrari is any good. So you damn well know that in that circumstance, when you haven't got a contract and they've actually fired you, you, if, you know, if that situation comes up, he's not going to give a win up to Leclerc, is he? Mm. Nah, no, you're probably right. He's not going to. He's not going to Barrichello it. Exactly. Who would? Well, we will find out. More Mercedes. Uh, during the off-season, we heard that both Mercedes drivers knew within a few laps of last season's testing that the 2023 car was a bit of a dog. They seem much happier this year, though, and testing seemed to go well, if you can call not being quite as fast as the Ferrari is going well. Uh, it's quite a different car from last year, so do we think they actually understood it this time? I mean, if they, they seem to. If, they've, if they're being honest in their communications then they seem to have more of an idea of what's going on, which was the big problem last year, is that like they didn't quite understand why it was shit and then occasionally good. Uh, and this time they think they do. But it does seem that... I mean, they're not as fast as Ferrari, it seems. So I guess it's like, OK, you've understood it now. Can you do anything with that? And in fairness, they've got history of being really good. So maybe... <laughs> But that thing you said there about both drivers knew that within a few laps of testing last year they knew the car was shit. Uh, this year it was a f- 
Did he even do a few laps and Lewis Hamilton's fucked off? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there is that, yeah. That does yeah. kind of say something, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So did you hear the thing about how Hamilton told Toto Wolff? He just went round his house and said, Well, apparently by the they way, do it every year before the season. They have mm. like a dinner around Toto Wolff's house. He makes dinner there, drinks some wine. They he talk makes about the, year the dinner. Ahead. Toto well, makes Well, that's what it. they said. I mean, that's what they said, you know. They make <laughs> he dinner. has somebody make the dinner. And Lewis Hamilton knew that the story was about to leak. So he said... I want to tell Toto face to face before it leaks. And so he goes over there and then he immediately says, I'm fucking off to Ferrari. <laughs> and all I can think is, how pissed off would you be? Not just that, that Lewis Hamilton's leaving your team and your, you know, and all the ramifications that has. But what if Toto Wolf was like genuinely looking forward to that dinner? It's like, oh, it's the one time of the year we get to have a chat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just comes in and goes, I'm leaving you. Bye. <laughs> well, uh, did he stay for the dinner? Oh, that would be tense, wouldn't well, it? I was going to say, did he say... Well, so he passed the red sauce. Yeah, <laughs> did he say it before the dinner? During the dinner or the end of the dinner? Because, I mean, like, I, it's... Surely it's a during the dinner well, thing. I, I heard an interview. There's a BBC podcast that I'd recommend, actually, called Back to Base that I've just almost finished listening to, which is literally just covering the off-season. They basically had two people embedded in... Uh, Williams and Mercedes. In Toto Wolf's house. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Lewis is coming over. I mean, it's another one of those things <laughs> where it's like they, they happen the to be making this documentary at an absolutely brilliant time when, when this happens. So they kind of were behind the scenes for the whole thing. And it is actually wow. quite interesting hearing hearing Toto saying, yeah, he kind of said it. And I was like, oh, and I didn't try and change his mind. Like he said, you know, if he's decided he's going, he's going, there's nothing to do about it. And he said, you know, I, I put Money. it behind me and we just crack, cracked on really. No, he said if he's decided to go, I'm not trying to try and stop him. He just went, oh, okay. And I think he was. What you said, we just cracked on. I don't know why, but I just imagine they just started jerking off. Yeah, that <laughs> popped into my head as well. What yeah, they say that specifically? <laughs> but that's well, well, Lewis. One last time, the preseason <laughs> jerk off. <laughs> I'm glad you had that horrible image in your head too. Why is it there? It's still there. It's continuing whilst I'm talking now. Yeah, it might be a t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> I think Toto is very hung. <laughs> Just, I feel he's got very big hands, but they, it, it wouldn't look out of place in them. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, dear. Mac- McLaren, arguably the best of the rest at the end of last season. McLaren would have been hoping to push things on even further at the start of 2023. But testing suggests that maybe they haven't quite. Uh, the team and driver's comments suggest they're not distraught, but that maybe things aren't working quite as well as they could have. Uh, have they dropped the ball here, maybe? <laughs> Oh, now I'm just thinking of Zach Brown wanking off Lando Norris. What well, no, a here when Lando Norris is wanking off, and then Piastri is like, you know that he says to Piastri, you know, you know the deal. <laughs> is this Sorry, is no. this just repeated up and down the grid? Like when they put the barriers up in testing, Look, we are you so think close. Taking the car apart. We're so close to a really bad joke about Red Bull right now. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Drops the ball would, is probably harsh for McLaren, um, but it does seem like maybe they haven't completely capitalised on the run that they were up to. But on the one hand, it's testing, so we have no idea, and we'll find out this weekend. On the other hand, yes, they've definitely dropped the ball. But they were shit at the beginning of last season anyway, weren't they? And they, they were, were not terrible shit. at the beginning were of Were they shit? They, yeah, they were they shit. Were, they were rubbish. They and were then right they, the back. they pulled and it then back. And suddenly they went, and were uh, much better. So maybe they're just following that same pattern maybe but the, it, at the end of last season they were the second best team and according to testing they're now maybe the fourth best team well uh-huh. which i would argue is not good enough Ooh. but they do have yeah. some good drivers and Sounded very stern. You know, let's see because last year they unlocked that huge amount of pace everyone was kind of going well they must have worked out what's going to be good about next year's car and i reckon they just got a bit cocky i reckon they were like yeah we are good aren't we we are we're fucking mclaren well i wonder if they spent so long trying to get the pace out of last year's car that while everyone else was working on this year's car they were still frantically working on last year's car and maybe it could be i mean that's utter speculation i've no idea but love it yeah let's let's say it's it's gospel that's definitely what speculate that's all we should do uh aston martin Mega fast at the start of last season, mega slow in the middle, and mega meh towards the end. Aston appeared to have moved things on a bit over the winter, which is good, but bearing in mind their regular podium nudging speed last year is still a fallback on our book. How much patience do we think Fernando Alonso is going to have if they don't get things moving quickly? Not much, because he wants to go to Mercedes. Mm. (coughs) I think the way that Alonso's brain works is that even if Aston Martin is quicker than Mercedes this year, he still wants to go to Mercedes just to fuck with Hamilton. So he's he just definitely be, does. He 
definitely. Have does you heard work. some of the things he's been saying? No. I, I'm going to have to completely paraphrase because I haven't got the quote, but it was something along the lines. In his of accent. Like, eh. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to do his accent. I've had, I've had a beer and a, a, a strong and a half beer. No, a beer? What? Two strong beers. And, uh, <laughs> and it's, I, no, it's oh, just... Fernando, you're in the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see. Uh, he basically said, look, there are three world champions in the, on, the, on the grid and only one of them is looking for a seat next year. This guy. Ooh. So this he's guy. like, I'm, I'm pretty and good at me. And Oscar is like, are you... you you're not a world champion. And then he's like, I drove from Minardi. And then Oscar Piastri's like, who? Who are they? <laughs> are you colossal? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think Fernando is going to be rapid. Unless unless Aston really get their shit together. Never going to happen. Well, I mean, it did happen. That's the thing. Like, at the start of last year, it had The thing happened. is, it didn't happen, did it? It was What happened last year was Red Bull were great. Mm. Mercedes were a bit shit, Ferrari were a bit shit, McLaren were a bit shit, blah, 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 blah. And Aston Martin were like a little better than they normally are, but because other teams were shit, they were second. I mean, it's a it fair was never real. It's a fair it point. Never, nothing's real. It's, it's a sport. It's all made up. It's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> I do remember that when Haas first started, they were actually quite reasonable, and then they just got worse well, and worse. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, Lance Stroll is written down here, and I confess... of. Everything that's happened over the off season, I don't think I've thought of Lance Stroll once on anything oh, in any of the coverage. And I actually watched a fair bit of testing and read quite a lot of stuff. And I don't remember seeing anything or hearing anything about Lance Stroll. <laughs> Maybe Did signs anyone? could take no? an Aston seat. I mean. I think if a lot, well, if Alonso goes to Mercedes, then maybe, but it it's going well, no, to require. Well, we can't see Stroll. Would Stroll is Stroll going to hang around? I don't. I mean, Why? I'd love to think that his dad will fire him, but I can't see it happening. I think he's just got the safest. Uh, yeah, seat well, in we've F1. had this chat before. Yeah, yeah. I still believe that Stroll doesn't want to be a Formula One driver. So, what if they come up with a ruse that Carlos signs enters next year as Lance Stroll, <laughs> so he changes his name and has a wig on. <laughs> Daddy Stroll won't know his Canadian he, accent. Yeah, Daddy Stroll doesn't know what his kids look like, so he'll he'll be there going, "Oh, Lance, you're looking thin," and um, "Oh, your hands not all broke." And what then the accent you've developed. <laughs> oh, uh, I am from uh, Toronto. I don't know where it's from. <laughs> and yeah, and then and then in a few years we go, "What happened to Carlos Signs?" And then <laughs> do you remember cut that? To do you remember that Spanish Lance guy? Stroll, Lance Stroll be dressed as Carlos Signs with his cousin, just like. Jerk it off. <laughs> <laughs> this comes back to this, doesn't it? With Toto Wolf. Uh, um, and the also rants. Uh, the Visa Cash App Red Bull Alpha Toro Midland Bank Motor Cows. What the hell is this name? Uh, well, reasonable livery, stupid name. Car looks all right, actually. The car looks fine. The livery is okay, but it's not as good as the old Toro well, it, Silvery ones. In, in a season fine. of shitty liveries, it's one of the less terrible. I don't, I, I, I don't like it. I don't know why. I'll have to look in more detail. But more importantly, the name was a fucking abomination, and I don't want to. I don't want to hear about this. T- I don't care if Daniel Ricciardo wins a championship. Oh, it'll be interesting to see what the commentators uh, say on it. No, RB, I think at the moment, or RB. V-carb. All right, both uh, are terrible. Williams can't go wrong with that. A bit uh, for most of the test, but then some decent stuff towards the end suggests the slow climb back from incompetence is continuing. Yeah, anything better than terrible will be good. Yep, yeah, James Wells has come in and he's finally got people off of the set squares and onto the computers. So, you know, next year they're going to do a whole car from a printout. <laughs> it's a no protractor zone. Some 1991 Olivetti's. Steak! <laughs> the car's bright green and has a silly name, but not as silly as the Red Bull. Uh, looks no, fun- not the, not, no, you see, this is the problem. Not the Red Bull, the Racing Bull. Except they're not calling it the racing ball, they're calling it the RB. The RB. For fuck's sake. <laughs> not as silly as the RB. I'm just going to do that again. The car's no, bright green. That's, that's exactly okay, encapsulates okay. the problem. All right, I'll fine. I won't. Oh, sorry, Phil. Fuck's sake. <laughs> looks, <laughs> looks fast on one lap and not so fast over race distance. You're the victim here, Ollie. Don't, don't, I know, I, I don't am. beat I, yourself up. I, yeah, I know. I, yeah. I wrote RB and you naturally said Red Bull because I hence did. the I, problem. It's, so, the, so, so wait, the team is called Steak. But they're not called state. Well, if there's I've a lost country track. that's if there's a country that's banned gambling advertising, they can't be called steak. In which case they're because called it's kick. A, maybe because they're called kick. Or maybe even sauber. No, Still not kick quite clear. sauber. I thought it was kick, kick sauber. Steak. 
the estate kick cyber kick out. Know. Alpine. And the, yeah, good. <laughs> it didn't break, but it was slow and apparently overweight. Oh dear. Yeah. Sounds like my winter. They've dropped the ball. That ball is dropped. Look, I think Alpine are on course to win a race within a hundred races, starting from now. <laughs> <laughs> now, sorry, next now. No, now. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do the Haas song anymore what? because I, they don't they don't deserve it. Okay. Wow. Right. Haas. Uh, oh, he's done it. <laughs> Can I resist? I was indifferent to that decision. Gunter Steiner is out, and new guy Ao Komatsu looks to have a lot of work to do. The car isn't ready as it should be, apparently in part because the team spent ages last year trying to stop the eating tyres. Still, if they're solved, then maybe it will get better. I've just got an image of like one mechanic who's just always eating tyres, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like. Oh, fucking hell, Billy. Look, we're going to put that on the car. Yep, yep, yep. But they're this so car, delicious. This car's never going to last a full stint now. It's got a big chunk missing from I it. I don't know what it is about these tyres, but they sure is tasty. Which ones taste best? Wet, hard or soft? <laughs> That's it from us, but wait, we'll be back for another episode on Thursday answering questions in Listener's Corner. Uh, get yours in at wrong at ff1s.com. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Tromans. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about, sad note, uh, Wilson Fittipaldi, uh, brother of Emerson, one of the founders of the Copper team, uh, who has passed away at a, at a ripe old age. Rest in oh, peace. Wow. And to Terry Saunders. We also haven't had time to talk about... That inflatable, non-inflatable basketball that's doing the rounds on the internet. Because they do the same with tyres. I saw what? this. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for f one sake, and follow us on Twitter at for f one sake. Oh, and check out our YouTube channel, where, if it's all gone well, you can watch our disappointing faces spout the same words you've just heard. Or maybe you're watching it now, in which case we'll do an audio podcast too, and we're doing something Especially for the YouTube version right now. There we go. Uh, <laughs> anyway, just type in for F1's sake to something and see what comes up. Terry, where can people buy merch? Look, I know this is a running joke to the podcast. Oh, I went to design a new t shirt. You promised, but Terry. You promised. I made a promise at the end of last year to design some new t shirts. And if you go to ff1s.com forward slash shop, 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 you will find the new t shirts <gasps> in our range. Real fucking actual did new t shirts? I fucking did oh it. Oh, my yes, new God. T-shirts. So, how long this, this will last us another three, four years? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I I was quite surprised to see when I checked the t-shirts we do sell that there's one called Fucking Tennis, which is based on an in-joke that we did about six years ago. (laughs) (laughs) And even more so, the one about me thinking I had an STI, but it turned out to be a wisdom tooth. For some reason, we designed as a t-shirt. And for some reason, someone fucking bought one (laughs) once. (laughs) Thank you, whoever you are. Now you can buy more. There's more. There's more t-shirts. Should we do a big sell? Do it. All right, we'll do more of a big sell in the next episode on Thursday. But yeah, yeah new t-shirts, sure. go and check them out. What's the new address t-shirts. again? FF1S forward slash shop dom com shop 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 shop. What? <laughs> FF1S.com forward slash that was like, shop was, shop shop. That was the audio equivalent of being generated by AI. That's like when they get the letters wrong. <laughs> so, it's it's shop. Thanks for uh, listening. I've been Ollie Peart. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.